Hello and welcome to the Martini Shot, home of movie reviews and movie theme cocktails. My name is Brandon. Today we are going to be reviewing the 2023 horror film Saw X. But before we do that, let's perform cocktail surgery with a fizzy tequila drink I've named the Mind Melter. And hey, if you enjoy movie reviews and movie theme cocktails, be sure to leave a like and hit the subscribe button if you'd like to help support the channel. Obviously, the first thing I thought of after seeing this film was which trap could I best represent in a drink? The one I immediately gravitated towards was the one where someone basically has to remove a piece of their own brain matter, put it into a dissolving compound, and retrieve your key before a big waffle maker steams your head. So that made me think of heat, bubbles, and brains, which eventually led me to the Mind Melter. It's a simple drink with a bit of refreshing bubbles and a bit of heat coming together to create something that will surely scramble your brain if you're not careful. Let's get into it. All right, I said it was gonna be simple and you don't get any more simple than a drink where you build straight into the glass you're gonna be drinking it out of. You're gonna to wanna to use a rocks glass and the first ingredient we're gonna be adding is a small spritz of absinthe. Basically, you're just gonna to wanna to coat the inside of the glass with a little bit of absinthe. You're only gonna need a tiny bit for this. I would definitely recommend using an atomizer. It just makes everything a lot simpler. And once you have that out of the way, now we're gonna be adding some habanero simple syrup. Mine was made using one cup of sugar, one cup of water, and two diced habaneros. And you're gonna be doing three fourths ounces. Next up is silver tequila. You are gonna be doing one and a half ounces. Now, before we top it off with some lemon lime soda, we actually need to add some ice. And for this particular drink, I went ahead and made some very special brain ice. What is brain ice? Well, it's basically just using a brain ice tray mold that you can buy at Target. But to make them look somewhat closer to the color of actual brains, I actually added a little bit of grenadine into the mix. To fill up the entire tray, I essentially used a combination of three ounces of water and one ounce of grenadine, which essentially comes out to three fourths parts water and one fourth part grenadine per ice mold. Because of the high sugar content of grenadine, it doesn't freeze super, super well. So that's kind of why I wanted to cut it with water. But go ahead and throw those into your glass. And now you can go ahead and top it off with your lemon lime soda. And there you go. Now you have the Mind Melter. So this is called the Mind Melter for two reasons. Basically, the first reason, it's a very simple, very spirit forward drink that is definitely going to affect you if you drink it too fast or you drink too many of them. The tequila is definitely present, but it's not that overwhelming bite you might expect. It does get brought back a little bit thanks to the lemon lime soda and a little bit of that heat from the habanero syrup. The combination of all the flavors almost brings out kind of like this spicy vanilla type flavor. It's very interesting. Something that you might not really pick up when you're drinking tequila is that it does have notes of vanilla in it. And I think it really gets brought out here. The second reason why it's called the Mind Melter is because those grenadine brains are going to slowly start to melt, kind of sweeten the drink up a little bit more and add a nice little flavor of pomegranate to the mix. Bottom line is it's a super simple drink, but a very effective drink as well. Now that we have our drink, let's jump straight into the review of Saw X. If you enjoy insane amounts of blood, gore, bodily dismemberment, head-scratching twists, and skewed senses of morality, Saw is most likely your kind of series. What started as a low-budget contained thriller from the mind of horror visionary James Wan, the franchise has absolutely blown up since the early 2000s. With 10 films, a few video games, comic books, and amusement park rides, the series has cemented itself as one of the most profitable horror franchises of all time with its main killer, John Kramer, AKA Jigsaw, being recognized as one of horror's most iconic villains. But how many films about torture devices, pig masks, and puppets on tricycles can you squeeze out before attention starts to run dry? Probably not too long as the following sequels range from okay to bad with the franchise's newest edition, 2021 Spiral, failing to garner great reviews despite trying to change up the formula. But Saw X attempts to bring it back to basics by maintaining the focus on John Kramer and his dastardly inventions. This works to bring more insight into the man behind the Jigsaw murders and revisit his penchant for horrific torture devices. Yet making your villain the main character comes with some challenges, especially when you try to portray him in a more sympathetic light. This is where Saw X ultimately stumbles, not really succeeding in expanding upon Kramer's beliefs and reasoning in a meaningful way, while continuing the often blatant lie that he himself is not a killer. The traps are gory fun as always and will most likely leave you squirming in your seat, but truthfully, they've been much worse than other films. What you're left with is an okay time that doesn't do too much to expand upon the main idea of the franchise, but if all you're looking for is the hits to play, then the film has you covered. In an effort to get back to basics, Saw X features the return of John Kramer, who in the current Saw timeline is actually dead. But this actually turns out to be a prequel happening in between the first Saw and its sequel. 
In this film, Kramer travels to Mexico for an experimental surgery to remove the cancer in his brain, only to find out the entire operation is a scam designed to steal dying people's money. This sets Jigsaw on his usual path of revenge disguised as redemption as he starts to torture those that have wronged him. This is the first of the franchise to actually focus on Kramer as the main character, giving us even more insight into his twisted mind. Well, kind of. The film attempts to paint Kramer as a product of unfortunate circumstances by putting him up against a group of people literally scamming cancer patients. And you know, you almost feel for the guy. He shows signs of wanting to move on with his life, and the surgery was his way out of the world of murderous toy making. But at the end of the day, he's still a psychopath. I do think it's funny how the first act of the film almost attempts to humanize and garner sympathy for him, even if this is still an earlier moment in his career. We literally see him imagine sucking the eyeballs out of a guy's head right at the beginning. And you know, Tobin Bell is doing a decent enough job trying to convey this more desperate, downtrodden version of the character, but by the time we move into the second act, it's pretty much back to basics. If you're going to have a torturous psycho as your protagonist, who could you possibly put him up against to make us feel anything? Well, the embodiment of all the terrible aspects of Big Pharma is what we get. Cecilia Peterson is the ringleader behind the surgery scam that has conned Kramer and many others, who ends up getting locked up alongside her white-collar cohorts. Each faces a test they must attempt to survive in order to earn their freedom, and as Jigsaw puts it, find a new lease on life. So look, I know this is the 10th film in the series, and I'll admit I haven't seen all of the films, so there may be something I'm missing, but Jigsaw's whole deal is kind of bullshit, right? He sets up these elaborate traps that force people to face gruesome bodily harm in the crusade to appreciate life more. I get the idea behind it, but when all your traps continue to kill people at the very last second before they complete it, I don't know, you might just be a murderer. The we don't kill people mantra Jigsaw and his associates constantly repeat is obviously dumb, which I would be willing to accept if this film didn't try to sell us on feeling anything for John Kramer. Having Jigsaw as the unequivocal villain of the entire film franchise keeps his slanted morals firmly in place as antagonistic hurdles for our flawed protagonist to attempt to fight through. Putting him in the role of a hero or hell even an anti-hero just doesn't work well for me, at least not here. I think a story like this could be given some depth similar to Prisoners or Big Bad Wolves, but this film seems pretty dead set on making you sympathize with Kramer by more or less telling you he's like this because of the misfortunes that befell him. Again, this works for a villain because you know they are supposed to be wrong, even if there's a bit of truth to them. But no amount of Kramer playing with a kid or staring out at a beautiful sunset will make me feel anything positive about a guy like this. I'm really not trying to psychoanalyze this series, so let's just get back to what you probably come to see in these films, the traps. For me, they were honestly a little mixed, yet all of them do more or less deliver on the series trademark viscera. You've got everything from self-amputation to performing brain surgery on yourself, which is just as revolting as it sounds. But then there's some other traps that involve exposure to radiation, being waterboarded with blood, and being trapped in a room with poisonous gas that just feel super underwhelming. In theory, they're scary, but in execution, they're honestly pretty boring to watch, which is a shame considering these are the selling point of the series. But I cannot deny that practical effects work to bring every severed and mutilated body part to reality. It's undeniably gross and disturbing, with the pain of each experience really being sold by the actors. It's really what you came here for, I just wish it made more of an impact on me like it did in the previous films. Outside of the gore, the technicals here are mostly okay. The film maintains that hectic, erratic editing style that was popularized in the original film, but I do think the film loses a bit of its grunge aesthetic when not shot on that old 16mm film, but the coloring does make it acceptably disgusting to look at. Alongside the gruesome traps is also exceptionally revolting use of sound design, something that really helps to sell the body horror. The script is mostly so-so, but the style of the narrative doesn't really need it to be all that fleshed out, even if it does leave me with a few questions. How exactly did John Kramer build a bunch of traps in a completely different country with limited resources and assumingly no contacts? Maybe he just stuffed a bit of C4 and a Billy the Puppet into his carry-on. And of course, as Saw likes to do, it ends with a twist that I thought was fairly admirable, though I do think the ending itself is a bit of a dud, finishing off with an underwhelming trap that ends on such an unsatisfying note, and one that actually made me chuckle by how lame it was. Though I have my issues, I did still have a decent time with this 10th installment of a legendary franchise, something I haven't really been able to do with Scream, 
Halloween, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, or The Exorcist. It feels silly to put its central villain in a loose anti-hero role, but it does lead to some fun traps and some top-notch violence and gore. It's one of those films that I actually enjoyed a bit more thanks to a bit of switching off the old brain, which usually doesn't work for me. I'm not a huge Saw fan, but I think most fans will probably have a good enough time with this one. Curious if those fans feel the same way I do about Amanda's haircut. Wouldn't mind my eyeballs being vacuumed after seeing that. For my rating, I'm giving this film two and a half severed legs out of five. Guys, thank you so much for tuning into this episode of The Martini Shot. If you saw Saw X, let me know what you thought about it down in the comments. And if you like what you saw here and would like to see more, don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow me across all social media channels. Those links are down in the description below. And if you enjoy movie reviews and movie-themed cocktails, be sure to check out my website, martinishot.blog. Until next time, thank you again for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Live deliciously, but please remember to drink responsibly.